Afghanistan is in chaos right now. These are the scenes at the Kabul airport as people rush to leave Afghanistan. Most of them are afraid of what might happen next. The president has fled the country and Taliban fighters have seized the presidential palace and taken control of nearly all of the country in just over a week. Scores of Taliban fighters and just behind us, the U.S. Embassy compound. Following the U.S. withdrawal, the Taliban fighters stunned the world in how quickly they took over control of the country. We must also face the reality of a change of regime in Afghanistan. The sacrifices of Canadians who believed and continue to believe in the future of Afghanistan. Uh, the inability of Afghan security forces uh, to defend their country uh, has played a, a very uh, powerful role in what we've seen. People are fleeing the country as they're worried that the country could descend into absolute mayhem or the Taliban could carry out revenge attacks against those who work with the Americans or the government. So how did Afghanistan get here and who are the Taliban? Afghanistan is a country located at the crossroads of Central and South Asia. It has a population of roughly 33 million people. It is estimated that more than 99% of the Afghan population is Muslim. The word Taliban means students in the Pashto language. This is Mullah Abdul Ghani Baradar. He is the co-founder of the Taliban and is likely to be the next president of Afghanistan. But to understand what's really going on, we have to go way back in time. The Soviet Union had invaded Afghanistan in 1979 to prop up the communist government in Afghanistan and eventually met the fate of big powers that have tried to impose their will on the country. It was driven out. The Soviets were defeated by Islamic fighters known as the Mujahideen, a patchwork of insurgent factions supported by the US government, only too happy to wage a proxy war against its Cold War rival. The Soviet Union left Afghanistan in 1989. But the joy over that victory was short-lived as the various factions fell out and began fighting for control. The country fell into warlordism and a brutal civil war. The Taliban emerged in the southern Afghan city of Kandahar around September 1994. Mullah Muhammad Omar formed the group with 50 students. He was unhappy that Islamic law had not been installed in Afghanistan after the ousting of communist rule and now with his group pledged to rid Afghanistan of warlords and criminals. The Taliban quickly attracted a significant following. Within months, around 15,000 students joined the group. The promise made by the Taliban was to restore peace and security and enforce their own austere version of Sharia or Islamic law once in power. Some sources say that Pakistan was heavily involved in the creation of the Taliban. Pakistan's intelligence agency ISI strongly supported the Taliban in 1994 and hoped for a new ruling power in Afghanistan favorable to Pakistan. In September 1995, they captured the province of Herat, bordering Iran, and exactly one year later, they captured the Afghan capital, Kabul. By 1998, the Taliban were in control of almost 90% of Afghanistan. When the Taliban took power in 1996, 20 years of continuous warfare had devastated Afghanistan's infrastructure and economy. There was no running water, little electricity, few telephones, functioning roads or regular energy supplies. Basic necessities like water, food, housing and others were in desperately short supply. In 1996, the Taliban declared an Islamic Emirate, imposing a harsh interpretation of the Quran and enforcing it with brutal public punishments including floggings, amputations and mass executions. They strictly curtailed the role of the women. The Taliban believed in an ideology dictating that women should play only the most circumscribed roles in the society. They prohibited women and girls from taking most jobs or even going to school. And women caught outside the home with their face uncovered risked severe punishment. 
women were permitted to go out only when accompanied by male relatives or risk Taliban beatings. Unmarried women and men seen together also faced punishment. They even brutally assaulted a seven-year-old girl for wearing white shoes. They prohibited music, television, filming, as well as most forms of art such as paintings or photography, participation in sport including football and chess, and recreational activities such as kite flying. They also made clear that the rival religious practices would not be tolerated. In early 2001, the Taliban destroyed towering statues known as the Great Buddhas of Bamiyan, which were 1500 years old. The brutal rule of Taliban was violating the most basic human rights of the Afghan people. And then, 9-11 happened. Another one, another plane just hit. <gasps> right, oh my god, another plane has just hit, it hit another building. Just moments ago, of the second plane hitting the World Trade Center, that is spectacular pictures. This is a day when all Americans from every walk of life unite in our resolve for justice and peace. When they were in power, the Taliban made Afghanistan a safe harbor for Osama bin Laden while they built up a terrorist group called Al-Qaeda. After the September 11th attack, President George Bush demanded that the Taliban hand over Al-Qaeda and bin Laden to the United States. The Taliban refused to cooperate. On 7th October 2001, Less than one month after 9-11, the U.S., aided by United Kingdom, Canada, and other countries, initiated military action, bombing Taliban and Al-Qaeda-related camps. The stated intent of military operations was to remove the Taliban from power and prevent the use of Afghanistan as a terrorist base of operations. The United States conducted targeted killings against Taliban leaders, mainly using special forces and sometimes unmanned aerial vehicles. British forces also used similar tactics. Unleashing a heavy airstrike campaign, the US and its allies soon toppled the Taliban government. By the first week of December, the Taliban regime had collapsed. Most of the Al-Qaeda and Taliban officials who survived fled to Pakistan. The U.S. began pouring resources into a new war in Iraq and American officials told the world that Afghanistan was well on its way to becoming a Western-style democracy with modern institutions. But many Afghans were coming to feel that those foreign institutions were just another way for corrupt leaders to steal money. In the countryside, the Taliban began gaining ground and support, particularly in rural areas. Their numbers grew, some fighters were intimidated into joining, others happy to volunteer, and almost all of them better paid than local policemen. The Taliban weathered the storm when President Barack Obama vastly expanded the U.S. military presence in Afghanistan up to around 100,000 troops in 2010. And when the Americans began drawing down a few years later, the insurgents began gaining ground again. It was a campaign of persistence, with the Taliban betting that the United States would lose patience and leave. More than 2,400 American lives, $2 trillion, tens of thousands of Afghan civilians and security forces deaths later, President Donald Trump made a deal with the Taliban and declared that American forces would leave Afghanistan by mid-2021. The U.S. agreed to withdraw troops and release some 5,000 Taliban prisoners, while the Taliban agreed to take steps to prevent any group or individual, including Al-Qaeda, from using Afghanistan to threaten the security of the U.S. or its allies. President Biden endorsed the approach and presided over an uncompromising troop withdrawal even as the Taliban began gobbling up whole districts and then cities. And now, the Taliban rule the entire nation of Afghanistan. The Taliban have tried to present themselves as different from the past. They have claimed to be committed to the peace process, an inclusive government and willing to maintain some rights for women. But this all seems to be a mask. Many of the movement's current top leaders were in power when the Taliban ruled Afghanistan from 1996 to 2001. The change of heart seems very superficial. After all, their goal is implementing Islam as they understand it, not develop a modern country. Nothing is certain right now except the fact that there's only one loser in this entire ordeal, the innocent people.
whether it's the taxpayers of the United States or starving kids of Afghanistan.